Phoenix used to be the face of Valorant. I got this. He looks absolutely on for this one, pushing for. Oh no, Zabrosa! He's Ooh. managed to get all four. That's incredible That's in there from him. Insane. That is that absolutely insane. That shouldn't happen. He was the game's most exciting agent, a key part of any good team comp. 58% of the pollsters put this guy top three, high tier in their rankings. By far, number one was Phoenix. And yet, as the months wore on, he started to fall from glory. We only have one character in the F tier right now, and it's Phoenix. Phoenix went from being one of the best, most popular agents in Valorant to literally being completely unpickable in pro play. I can entry, I might lurk, I op, I rifle. So having that versatility, I'm able to do with like Jet, for example. Um, not really with Phoenix. So we had to ask, what happened to Phoenix? Ooh, you're dead! Hey folks, before we get into the video, I want to let you know that if you are watching this as soon as it comes out, you can still tune in to our VCT NA watch party. Liz is going live this weekend and watching all of the games with you, our fans. It's going to be an awesome time, so please show up. Okay, so Phoenix is basically the face of Valorant. He was one of the game's original agents, one of three duelists available in the beta, and by far, the most exciting one at the time. Rank number one, uh, 58 percent of the pollsters put this guy top three high tier in their rankings by far number one was phoenix aggressive players like strived on that agent because they could just peek whatever they want and at the time that was like the best flash you can have like it's just phoenix flash in valorant's early days as teams were still figuring out how to build the best comp phoenix seemed like a no-brainer pick after all he was an entry character that had a little bit of everything Oh, they're going straight from the dark cover. That's going to connect the screen. Beautiful stuff here. Link, though, takes down Nagset. Amazing oh, stuff here why? so far from Liquid. Deflecting this attack. Scream is tapping the heads. That's what he does. That's who he is. Well, hands to eliminate some positions. Actually, oh, actually, nice. gets it. Zom's just stuck in that position on very low on HP. And with that said, now, oh my god, there's Ooh. a chance here. FRZ against Shazam. Now he knows exactly where he is, Shazam, with the peaks. Can he find a shot here? There goes the hot hands. Oh, he falls nice. him forward. For Phoenix, I think the main reason why a lot of people were playing him at the start because like most people came from CSGO and he's like that agent that they had, you know, had the same kit as CSGO. So I think that's the reason why a lot of people were playing at the start. I still think everything will change over time. And, and I think those rankings will in a month from now already look drastically different. Uh, but I do think Phoenix, Phoenix is up there just because of his kit. Phoenix's curveball, a flashbang with a unique curving trajectory, seemed like a great way to enter a site. His blaze wall could cut a site in half, and enemies passing through it took damage and briefly had their vision eliminated, while Phoenix was healed by it. His Molotov, Hot Hands, had obvious use for clearing close angles. Plus, like his wall, Phoenix could use it to heal himself, a massive benefit for an entry character. And for all the entry fraggers who were still learning their role, there was his ultimate, run it back which basically brought Phoenix back from the dead if he screwed up or just wanted to gather intel. Phoenix cloned himself and the player got to run around with the copy. When the copy died or time expired, Phoenix returned to the place where he popped his ult pretty much unscathed. Phoenix was seemingly built to be a team player, while the other duelists in the game were a lot more selfish. Raze, Reyna, and Jet all had their strengths, but this early period in Valorant's history was Phoenix's golden age. Especially in North America, where some of the regions best saw Phoenix's potential and went deep on the agent. Oh, that arrow is Nice. Let's just relax. Oh, that's a big fight on the Sabrosa. Huge. Drone has hardly anything left in his kit. Oh. What? He picks oh. up two frags like it was nothing. Again. He's looking for he a gets... third. He might get himself a fourth here. He finds him around the corner and he's oh, gonna get the ace. But as the game's competitive scene grew and developed, the meta shifted towards other agents, and Phoenix's time at the top 
was about to come to an end. I think the moment I realized Phoenix was not it is because I used to watch Noted a lot and he used to make Phoenix actually. I used to watch all his videos and like suddenly he stopped playing Phoenix. I'm like, yup. There were a few reasons why Phoenix started to fall out of favor. Players began figuring out how to win with other duelists, how to pop off with the op on Jet, for example. And those agents now played a much bigger role in effective team comps. But even though Phoenix didn't lose any of his utility, even if it did get slightly more expensive over time, his pick rate was still plummeting. So what changed? They start dropping new agents and stuff, and he was kind of forgotten. He only was getting nerfed, nerf after nerf. Like, you know, his flashes were getting more expensive, and they never buff him. The problem was that Phoenix was the character who was closest to Counter-Strike. And while CS would occasionally add the odd gun or two to the game in its early days, unlike Valorant, it didn't have some wacky new utility for players to discover every patch. So what started out as an agent that most people considered a fundamental part of any good comp, the self-sufficient entry fragger, quickly turned into the game's worst duelist by comparison. And that didn't improve as more agents were added either. His kit oh, doesn't help his team as much, even though it can. But like, yeah, you can enter with him as a team. Like you can put your wall in and then flash around it. But obviously like there's so much abilities right now. Everything's so oversaturated. Like you really need the better ability. You can't really always rely on your guns. And that's what Phoenix does. Back during the 2020 Ignition series, Phoenix was a popular pick, seeing hundreds of rounds in the hands of aspiring superstars. One of the winning ways, and of course, keeping Wardell onto the jet. Now Sabrosa and Hayes get into three openers towards this midside, and just like that, they're on a five versus two here, Simo, with not much to work with. And TSM feels like Brock Lee. They're just taking off the ankle weights. <laughs> they're ready to fight. It's, I don't like. I don't even know what's happening. But by Masters three in Berlin in 2021, Phoenix had basically vanished from competitive play. There was one standout performance from Sick that reminded everyone that the agent existed, but it didn't exactly kick off a new Phoenix meta. Dapper on the other side, sitting towards the connector on the A side, but it's Sick. Takes himself forward, the spree's a bit, a little bit fruity, a little wild, but it's just fine in the end. And again, there is still no hope, there is still no way in. Finally, at Valorant Champions 2021, the biggest tournament of the year, Phoenix just didn't get picked at all. For fans, Phoenix was once an exciting introduction to a new game, but that game moved on to other agents, and his disappearance from pro play had other implications as well. Valorant is its own game, of course, but it clearly takes cues from CS. If Phoenix's kit was supposed to be foundational to the game, then what did his disappearing act have to say about Valorant's core design and its competitive future? Phoenix was meant to be one of the faces of the game, he was literally in the launch trailer. But despite Riot continuing to slap his face on all of Valorant's marketing materials, all of the early Phoenix hype evaporated. Jet replaced him as Valorant's most exciting agent. And it's easy to see why. Phoenix's well-rounded entry kit, and pretty much everything else he brings to the table, is totally outclassed by tons of other agents. For example, Phoenix's Molotov wasn't really designed to be useful for long lineups, which made it more of a personal tool than a team asset. Phoenix had a wall, sure, but unlike the walls Viper or Sage had, for example, his was just there to help him get bodies onto site initially or play some mind games once he got there. Like, hold on, I'm a wall and get the gun. Hold on, hold on. Walling? Okay, smoke, smoke it, something. Do something. Yeah. I'm gonna try and do there. There's no way I can smoke this. Hey, okay, it's just. Wait, what is that wall? What is that wall? <laughs> oh my god. What are you doing with that wall? And that brings us to what is arguably the most distinctive part of Phoenix's kit, Curveball, and the one glaring flaw that it has. The unique trajectory of the flash gave an enemy who was actively holding the angle plenty of information about how you'd peek the corner. Generally speaking, it's not so good for flashing yourself in, which is the major mistake that a lot of us had when we first were learning Valorant. And again, there are now plenty of other agents that can flash further into a site in a far safer and less obvious way. When Valorant first came out, Phoenix's flash was unique. But over the course of the game's life, we've gotten the flash that hunts you down, the CSGO flashbang, the reptilian flash, the flashbang that looks like a person. I mean, she's got good aim, but not on the real one. <laughs> and the list goes on. Now, not all of these are precisely a flash, and they aren't all equal in every possible scenario, 
but they all essentially do the same thing. They limit a player's vision, and they do it better than Phoenix can. So Phoenix's toolkit might look like the complete package, but once you start comparing his individual abilities to other options on other agents, including some that were very recently released, his kit just starts looking like garbage. We only have one character in the F tier right now, and it's Phoenix. It's official, Riot has left the British boy wonder to rot in the meta. It's time to get reworked Phoenix trending on social media, because that is the only way he will ever return to the meta in the current state of the game. Now, the one truly unique part of Phoenix's kit is his ult, run it back. It's supposed to give Phoenix the ability to come back from the dead by respawning the agent. But returning to your original position means that you're vulnerable, especially if you're outnumbered. You could easily be killed on respawn if enemies are around you. And while you could have your team cover you, that makes the ult more of a liability than an asset. I'm chilling. Just get us started seeing the Oh! Yeah. <laughs> I knew it. I, that was such a bad spot to do my ult. Oh my god, that's the worst ult spot. Today, it's clear that Phoenix has been outclassed. Other duelists have taken center stage, and there are even agents in other roles who do some of his kit better than he does. Phoenix has just fallen behind. And pro players definitely took notice. Okay, so Phoenix. D tier. I, D -tier. I mean, he needs a belt. He needs a mega buff. There's yeah. no reason to pick Phoenix, uh, considering you know Jet uh, Rays exist. He definitely needs a, a rework. I, I don't even want to say buffs. He just needs a rework. Over the past six months, Phoenix's competitive pick rate has fallen to a level similar to Yoru, a duelist that has a kit full of gimmicks instead of site entry staples. And with Jet as the first choice duelist in nearly every composition, many of which only need the one, it's unlikely you'll see a Phoenix in a competitive match anytime soon. Ironically, Phoenix's struggles earned him a fan base, one that is full of sickos trying to prove that he's not as bad as we all think he is. YouTubers like XTR and Raozu have built their channels partially on Phoenix's reputation as the underdog. You know what the funny shit is? Like whenever I try to queue in high rank games with Phoenix, they always be like, yo bro, you're trolling, I'm gonna dodge this game. I'm like, bro, bro, listen, I'm the best Phoenix man in the game, trust me. They're like, of course you're the best Phoenix man, nobody else played that shit. Raozu's dedication to his low tier pick has shown us that even if the pros aren't picking Phoenix, there are ways to make him work in ranked games. I feel like if you're a solo player, like a f***ing ranked demon, and you're trying to like, you know, just chill and play the game, and you want to be like, you're on you, like you just play for yourself, I think he can work very well. 50 on Reyna, 50 on Sky. Ooh. And these fanatical Phoenix faithfuls aren't just doing the same things over and over again for nostalgia's sake. They've actually innovated on the agent, and came up with new ways to use his kit effectively, including ground flashes, wall flashes, and the notorious reverse flash that let you keep the ability hidden for longer and peek right as the flash goes off. Easy, mate. That's done. Come on, let's go! For me, the reason Phoenix worked very well for me more than others because like I actually tried to clip. I'm not really interested in winning as much as I'm interested in getting that cool kill, you know? I think that helps me to see him this way, so I'm obviously kind of biased about him. There's even a subreddit where Phoenix mains can share their gripes about the difficulties they experience in ranked, but also where they can share ideas about what could be changed about the agent to make things better. And they've got plenty of opinions on how to fix him. One idea is to let Phoenix cancel run it back to return immediately to his starting position. Though there are definitely other ideas as well. I think his whole kit needs to be buffed. Because right now he's actually like, he has the worst abilities in the game. Like everything's useless. Truthfully, there is no quick fix to the Phoenix problem. Riot has said that they are looking into him and even they admit that they're not quite sure what they want to do with him yet. And there's lots of directions they could take him in. But what everyone agrees on is that he is in desperate need of help. They did not touch this agent since a very long time. Like all the other agents getting buffed and stuff. He's literally untouched. Like bro, Phoenix is literally the face of the game because like look at all the cinematics. You obviously think about that guy, like you're gonna do something about it. Because like he's the least picked, like what else do you need to see to buff the guy, you know? 
Phoenix might have once been a baseline, a touchstone, something that could have been used as a frame of reference in a tactical shooter that was trying to change the rules set by its predecessor. But as a duelist, Phoenix clearly hasn't kept up the pace set by new agents. So maybe when Phoenix gets buffed, because I know he will get buffed, because he really doesn't have much of a place in the meta, if I pick him, people think I'm trolling, kind of makes me sad. Sure, you can still pub stomp with him in a disorganized ranked game. And he does have a few dedicated mains who are desperately trying to make him work. But Phoenix isn't really contributing anything that you can't get in a better form somewhere else. Phoenix is still a Valorant OG. He helped create the game we all know and love today. But if Riot truly wants him to rise again, well, they really have their work cut out for them. Fellow Phoenix mains, I'm gonna have to tell you guys all have faith. Keep on waiting. The buffs are coming. The Phoenix meta gonna be revived. We're prepared. Stay prepared. Don't abandon my boy Phoenix. Those birds. Those are birds. Unfortunately, there is nothing I can do about the birds. Like they're not even outside my window. They're just, just ambient birds. The birds love, what, what's the word for esports? Jeu de vidéo compétition. These are esports birds, these are e-birds. You don't know this, but of course I am a Disney princess. And uh, the birds come to me to dress me in the morning. 